Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back, your lovely faces, to a brand new video here on the channel. And no, we do not owe Amber Heard an apology. Yes, you heard me right, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to be talking about something that popped up on my Twitter the other day. And it's this. The Brown Daily Herald, which is a student-run online newspaper. Opinion. The internet's reaction to last year's trial between A.H. and Johnny Depp encourages a culture of silencing survivors. That's not the actual title of the article either. The, the actual title is this. We all owe her an apology. So straight away, it's not really an opinion piece either because this person is the only article they've written on here as well. And it's a very, very PR puff piece about from a quarter and a bit in to the very end. There's some things in this, it's like, all oh, right, okay then. You know, you're using a lot of terminology that someone who is a undergraduate, I want to say that, or writing their first piece, you're not really that, you know? This is why I think it's a puff piece done by her PR team. That's why. But we got that by there, and as you can see by there, the message sent to survivors on college campuses, including at Brown, was clear. Do not come forward. Do not be the next AH. No. Because with that there, as I've said this countless times, every single instant is different. You cannot compare the two. And I will say, the people who uh, who keep saying this, you know, the ones, oh, it's another AH, or it's another this, or it's another that, it seems to be people who actually support her. Recently, with the Marilyn Manson situation, where you had someone come out and say, actually, Evan Rachel Wood made me uh, lie about all of this. You had people who, when you dig deep enough into their Twitter profile, you can see they've liked and they support AH, and they're saying, oh, she's, another a she's another Amber, she's another AH, she's another this. And it's like, no, she's not. No one is an another her. Because what this person did was absolutely despicable. And other people do despicable acts. You don't see other people being called, oh, the next John Wayne Gacy, or the next Jeffrey Dahmer. It's not. It's whoever that person is. TikTok is the defining app of our generation and a much more accessible source of information than traditional media outlets. So it's no shock that the app is becoming a major search engine for Gen Z. When the story of the AH and Johnny Depp trial, or perhaps more precisely the story of her as a villain and a liar, dominated TikTok for months in 2022, it suddenly reached a number of young viewers, often quicker than traditional reporting on the subject did. It's been like that since 2013. It's almost like this person has never, ever used social media to a degree of like, oh, okay, it's on Twitter first or it's on Facebook or whatever first. Oh, that's where it is. Yeah, I heard it via this or whatever. An undergraduate would not write that. A student would not write that. A student would be literally, they would know what social media is. They know. They know how fast it is, and to them, it would be an everyday thing. It would be normal. You wouldn't have someone writing, Oh, younger viewers often quicker than traditional reporting on the subject did. No, it wouldn't be like that. The trial, originally a case that Johnny Depp filed against her for defamation, became a proxy for a more fundamental question. Who did the jury believe more? Isn't that what the majority of a jury trial is? You show them the evidence. You tell your side of the story. They tell their side of the story. You look at the evidence. You try and put it all together. And you make your mind up like, well, I believe this person. Or I believe that person. Or have I got that wrong? <laughs> Let me know in the comments, folks. The treatment of the trial on the platform aimed at young people proves something horrifying about our post-Me Too world. Even among a younger and supposedly more enlightened generation, we still have not created an environment where women can speak out about this. Again, with this one, I am with Paulie on it, but not about the younger, more enlightened generation. Again, an undergrad would not write something like that. They're using words from, like, you know, an older person. 
I'll give you money if you put this as your opinion. That kind of thing, you know? But when I look at it, and it is, it's true. It's sad to see that people do not come out if they are a victim. If anything bad has happened to them, a lot of them this day and age, more so this day and age as well, is that they don't really speak out about it. Not the bad parts anyway. However, big however, I have seen more on TikTok from people saying, I'm gonna get you, I'm gonna get you arrested for this. And then you get people saying, Well, I haven't done that, and they're like, so they're gonna believe me more. It it's it's disgusting. This is why a lot of people don't get believed, because you have a group of people, which this is this is any kind of topic now, anywhere in the world, a small minority of people who scream and shout the loudest. And they're the ones everyone gets compared to. It happens for everything. And it's sad to see when you have people who literally, they could be a genuine victim. They could come forward and they get some people, not all people, like I said, because a lot of people do get tarnished with the same brush and they don't deserve it. It will be like, maybe you should stick with it, but go this way or go and see this. But then you also get people which is normally in the, in the close friend group who puts out a message, which then gets amplified on social media, and it just becomes literally like um, a telephone, the old game, you know, like whispers and all that kind of stuff, where it gets in more ludicrous and ludicrous the more times it gets put out there. This is what happens this day and age, but it's on TikTok. Like I was saying as well, I've seen so many videos where people are tagging me in things where you got women who are saying and they're laughing and they're joking. Yeah, I accused my ex of this, but he never did it. Can't you see why that people get bent out of shape on certain things? If people are seeing these type of videos and a lot of these, they got hundreds of thousands into the millions of likes, comments, and people see them and they're like, I'm not going to trust women anymore. I'm not going to trust men. I'm not going to trust this person because this is what they did. But it's just literally a small minority of people that do these horrible things. This is the problem this day and age. It does go on to say about, if you weren't on TikTok, let me catch you up. Don't care about that one. Nah. Going on about parodies, you know, viral accusations against her and everything else. But what this person is not bringing in is that the majority of the accounts of doing parodies were in fact women. I've shown so many people on my live streams and again on Twitter I've tagged people and everything else they've tagged me where it's women who are acting out like she was on the stand. Again they're not going to say it's mostly women because that will go against them of oh, you must believe all women so they're not going to label these women as the bad guys either. And it goes on to say about an endless supply of content dogpiling. Then it goes about the reality of the case, not as simple as much of the internet's conviction that AH was in the wrong and deserving of this uh, online stuff. Depp lost a near identical case in the UK. You mean in the UK where uh, there's photos of the judge's wife having dinner with Amber and her lawyer? He went about the case with Judge Penny Azkarati, the one who resided over the jury trial in America, said Johnny Depp did not have a fair trial. Are you regarding the case in the UK where they wouldn't allow Johnny Depp's uh, police officers to testify? Are you on about the one in the UK where AH is not a party to it? She was a witness. She did not win in the UK. And another thing as well, he goes on about, he also used a common tactic. Davo. Meaning this, in his strategy to win the US case. Now can you see why I'm saying words can mean so much? They're not going to be using words and looking at things like this, unless, to PR stunt, they've looked at other things online. Ooh, Davo, I'll have to look at that. Ooh, oh, this is what I think. Yeah, this is what they used. And then it goes on as well, which this is the one thing I do actually find uh, quite funny. 
This is something legal experts are likely aware of and usually wouldn't fall for. Explaining why Depp lost his judge-only trial in the UK, but which the average person on the jury is much more likely to buy into. Basically saying that the jury is stupid. That's what they're doing. And again... We've had so many lawyers on this channel, Stevie's. We've been on their channels talking and discussing all of this. And they've all gone. No, the evidence is there for him. That just goes to show that these people, they don't even believe lawyers, but they believe her lawyer, though. That's it. No one else. You know, that's how funny it gets. But it goes on to say about the facts alone should have prompted the average person to consider the possibility that the dominant narrator about her was wrong. But none of these facts seem to mean anything in the face of an overwhelming wave of online hatred against her. <sighs> the evidence proved it as well. That's the thing. But it does go on to say that they spoke to numerous female survivors who were all upset and sad and confused to why she was getting all of this hatred against her. Again, the majority of Johnny Depp fans, the ones who have supported him online, ones who were at the courthouse, the ones who were inside the actual uh, courtroom, you can watch them back. Majority is female. There's a lot of males in there, but a lot of the males are either reporters or lawyers. They just, they just do not like it that she got caught. That's exactly what it is. But anyway, I was saying, going on regarding what this entire thing is over, because as you can see, we've done quite a bit here where literally this part by here, the message sent to survivors, is not actually about that. It says there, we all owe her an apology. Nothing to do with that. As we go down, you go see, we got uh, just by their plight of the uh, people that you spoke to, what does this mean for college students? Last semester, the title... Uh, this uh, Nine and Gender Equity Office released statistics showing that reported increased. I thought you said no one came forward, Paul. From 87 to 132, which is absolutely disgusting. Those people should literally be sent to jail. While this increase was likely due to the return to campus post-COVID. Okay. That's why they did it, because they've come back. And it goes on to say regarding... We're not going to say these words, obviously. But... It's sad that people should come forward. That's the end of everything. The, the ch children. The people should come forward. Everyone who is a victim should come forward. Again, if it's a false accusation, be careful, because you could get changed. Change? You could get taunted like this. And exactly, if they are false accusations, you deserve to be taunted. Now, it goes on regarding... Mass ridicule of a high-profile survivor does not encourage the people to come forward. And this is where we get. This is where the headline comes into the article, literally towards the very bottom. The message sent to survivors on college campuses, including a brown was clear, do not come forward, do not be the next her. Our collective this, blah, blah, blah. But this is what I was on about, guys. We all owe her an, owe her an apology. It has nothing to do with whether you personally like her. It has very little to do with her at all. That is literally it. If it has very little to do with her at all, Paulie, then maybe you should have chosen someone else to write about because you have literally gone on... gone on a bit of a, a tangent with this. And you know, you're going across and you're saying... Oh. This is all wrong. Everyone is wrong. The jury's wrong. All the lawyers are wrong. I'm right. People who support her are right. Again, like I said, small minority of people, the ones who shout the loudest are the ones who always get seen and heard. And when it comes down to it, it was very little to do with her at all, this article. It has to do with the survivors here at Brown and across the world who now feel they are that much less safe to speak up. But you have got people who are coming forward, and they are coming forward with everything that's happened to them. Excuse me. Bit of a brain fart, then. But with this here, their Twitter one, this is the best response going. No, the message is don't come forward with false accusations. If you are a survivor and your complaint is real, stick to the rules and do it properly. That's it. Not through media PR stunts. 
that you said is dangerous, which is exactly is. But you got, let's say the truth, that is exactly what it is. If you're coming forward to false accusations, you deserve to get whatever comes towards you. You do. Because it's absolutely disgusting that you think you've got the right. Just because someone may have broken up with you. Just because of someone that you don't like. There is so many stories online that you will see on news programs. There's documentaries where people have been falsely accused and they've served jail sentences. They have lost their families, they have lost their jobs, their livelihoods. All you need, for example, is there was a story regarding a bunch of girls in America where a boy got accused of doing horrible things to him. Then they actually said, oh no, we, uh, we were lying. We were messing around, we just don't like him. That's terrible. And it's interesting to see that when you get people who th see those sort of things, and again, it's on TikTok. Some people are like, oh, that's funny, isn't it? No, it's not funny. It's absolutely disgusting to see that some people think that that's a good thing to do. And oh, let's have a laugh and a joke. Let's uh, say this person did this. Ha ha ha. No. False accusations, no matter what the crime, the person who does the false accusation should end up doing whatever the actual outcome for the perpetrator should have been. 100%. But that's what we got, guys. This is my opinion piece. You know, my opinion on Paul's opinion. Let me know what you think down below. If you're new to the channel, please like and subscribe. Hit the notification bell, and I'll see you all soon.